Hey, um, I think you guys know what time it is. It's a new video time. Uh, this video is definitely a interesting one. Um, and it's going to take a bit of explaining in the beginning, so, yeah. Um, but let's get out, let's start. So, this is basically all empires go to war. However, it's mainly set in, like, modern... It's mostly most all like the colonial empires go to war. So we have the British Empire in blue, French in pink, Spanish in red. These obviously are all at different times. The Russian Empire in whatever color this is, the Ottoman Empire. There was obviously some overlap. Um, by the way, Italy and like Belgium, and the Netherlands are not um overlap. We'll get to that later. So this is definitely Eurocentric. Um, there was no Indian Empire. I gave that to the British. Um, this, yeah. The US, I decided not to split it up between, I guess, the Spanish over here and here, the French over here, and then the British over here. Um, I decided that would just be like a bit unfair to the British as they literally control this, which would give them basically a free win. Um, and the Spanish, but yeah, I don't know. I thought it would be unfair, and they're strong enough to fight on their own, so I let them stay independent. Um, this color in, like, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Ethiopia, Sweden, Greenland, Iceland, Thailand, those represent uncolonized countries, um, slash countries that weren't big enough to have their own empire, so I just put them in miscellaneous. Um, maybe it's also, like, Greater Persia, I'm not quite sure. Um, there was obviously... There's, wait, uh, that should be in pink. I'm not quite sure why. Okay, that's better. Um, there's some overlap, for example, the Ottoman Empire, which is whatever this is, whatever color that is. The Ottoman Empire obviously overlaps with both British and the French Empire, and even Italian. But, um, I decided not to give it to, I, I only gave them, like, this Balkan stuff. Um, here in Japan, here in East Asia, it gets a bit more confusing. Um, this is Japan before World War Two, before they took Manchuria. I think that's a good, uh, thing to give to them, because first of all, it's powerful enough, and second of all, it is actually, like, a historical thing, um, and it took place at about the same time as the rest of these. And in China, this is just Jing China, so it's just China plus Mongolia, um, I combined Belgium and Netherlands, um, I thought that would be the most fair, slash, they wouldn't win, I'm just gonna spoil that, <laughs> um, I decided to combine Belgium and the Netherlands, the Portuguese Empire, I believe I accidentally made the Portuguese, oh, and then the German Empire, so here in Europe I made it a bit more confusing, so I zoomed in, um, so when we have... Uh, I think it's pretty obvious Portuguese there, Spanish. The Italian Empire controls Switzerland. I probably could have given them to the miscellaneous team, but whatever. I was too lazy. Um, the German Empire is kind of like a pre... Um, it's kind of like a World War II Germany, but it includes their colonies like Namibia and Tanzania, Cameroon and Togo land, and Benin, I guess. Um... But it also is, like, I tried my best to reflect the old imperial borders of, I guess, the Russian Empire and um, the German Empire pre-World War One. Actually, no, I didn't, but whatever. You know what? Screw this. Um, Germany is both a hybrid of, like, their World War Two self plus their colonial self. Um, one more rule I'd like to go over, that being... There will be no revolts. Um, if I allowed revolts in this, just there'd be an immediate revolt here and here and here and here and like there'd be so many revolts that this wouldn't even be fun. Um, so the only reason a revolt could happen is in captured territory. So let's say the British capture the Central African Republic, then they could revolt against um the British. Even if the Belgians capture them, they could, like, help. I don't know. Okay, um, that's enough going over stuff. I'm not going to try to explain this at the beginning of every video, but I'll go over it more briefly. Wrong color. 
Um, so let's start off with this war. So this is a mess. Um, not every side will all be at war Im immediately. And a lot of cleaning up will have to be done. So the first thing that happens is all the sides basically agree to um, Germany and France to form the first alliance, and that is to knock out the Netherlands and Belgium. Um, so let's go on to this Europe map. Uh, in order to do that, they'd have to take their colonies and these countries. However, due to the fact that these, like, we, I'm just gonna speed it up, um, French troops push into Luxembourg, oh yeah, they also control Luxembourg, I don't know, this is obviously super flat, basically the Germans capture the Netherlands, the French capture Belgium, and they basically partition those two countries, um, Wait, that's a good position. Um, now let's focus a bit more on the colonies. Um, a good example will be French Guiana, which will go to France. Or oh, not French Guiana, um, Suriname, which goes to France as well. Oh my God. Um, however, Germany and France both border the Congo. Um, however, France, so they also decide to just split it. I'm not going to go into the details. This is kind of a lame more, but basically it gets split like that. Just whoever can march in the fastest. The Dutch East Indies, um, I know I said there's no revolts, but, uh, hold up. How do I do this? Team up with Portugal. What do they? No, they team up with the British as they are too weak and the Spanish to capture Indonesia by themselves. They basically divide it like this. France gets this island, Sumatra. The British, being the largest, get Java. Um, follow, actually, no, the British don't get Java. The British get Borneo and this island. The Spanish get Java. Screw you, screw realistic. No, the Germans get Java. Um, and then the Portuguese get the rest, um, except Papua, which the British get. Portuguese get Timor. Um, yeah, Portuguese get Timor. I'm not quite sure what the difference between these two blacks are. It doesn't make sense. Those are the same color. You know what? Screw this. Uh, Portuguese get Timor in the surrounding area. Great. Um... I think with that, Belgium, Netherlands has officially been eliminated, marking the first country to fall. Next, so now these four countries have basically the French, British, um, Spanish, or the Spanish didn't get anything, whatever. French, British, and German empires have basically just agreed to partition something. Same with the Germans, actually. And those three, um... Realizing their powerful, agreed to partition one more thing. Uh, that being Italy. Um, that's not true, not Italy. They don't go for Italy yet. Um, they go for the miscellaneous countries. And they actually use the help of Portugal with this one. Do they use the help of Portugal? No. Why would they use the help of Portugal? That doesn't make sense. Um, miscellaneous countries... So, these are obviously all over. Um, Italy really wants part of Ethiopia, so they kind of force themselves into giving that part. However, this is given, uh, we're going to pretend Djibouti is a British colony. I don't care if it's actually French. Um, so, yeah, the British capture Ethiopia. Uh, I don't, this, the early stages of this is just going to be very quick. As we get later, by the way, Guinea-Bissau's Portuguese, I don't care. As we get later into the series, which might be like 10 parts, who knows, um, this will be much more in detail. On the Arabian Peninsula, we also have British forces. Once again, I'm not going to go into detail. They quickly go along the coast, capturing most of the population, with it the rest of the country falls. Now the entire Arabian Peninsula is under um, 
what's it called? The entire Arabian Peninsula is under British control, establishing a connection between the African forces and forces in India. They're not going to go for Iran yet. German forces are able to capture Sweden. Um, and British forces capture Greenland and Iceland. Um, by the way, this is not a permanent alliance. This is a temporary alliance. Is any country left... Oh, Thailand. Uh, because the French didn't get anything, even though the British did most of the invasion, the French are given all of Thailand. Um, anything else that's non-colonized? Yes. Uh, by the way, I gave Liberia to the British. Um, Iran and Afghanistan. And a lot of people want this land. So the British, the French stop, um, as there's not really, they can't get this land. But the British team up with the, um, Russians and Ottomans to partition this land. Um, the way it works is the Ottomans, so the British push into, no, the Russians will push into Afghanistan from the north. Uh, what color is that? It's this. They capture the northern areas of both of these, as well as Armenia and Azerbaijan. Um, the Ottomans push into this part of Iran and, like, where Tehran is, and the British get everything down south. Um, okay, those are the first two eliminations. Um, yeah. This is going to take a while. Um, the next place we go is actually with a... I don't want any permanent alliances forming yet. I want the Brit a one-on-one -on -one war. That being the British versus the Italian Empire. Um, once again, I'm going to spare the details so far. The British capture Somalia and um, Eritrea. A push into the Libyan desert is made, and eventually they threaten Tripoli. Italian surrender could go into detail, not going to. A landing is made on Sicily, followed by Sardinia, both fall. From there, a landing is made in the mainland, and eventually Italy falls. Switzerland is given to Germany, and Italy is now under... British control? Yeah, I'm not really quite sure. But Italy is under British control. And Switzerland is under German control. Uh, yeah, don't, don't ask about... Once again, this is not supposed to be realistic. Once again, Italy is under British control. Not quite sure how long this has been. I think it's been like... I think I could do one more thing. By the way, that was... Italy might have just been the weakest empire in this. Um, so now most... What do we have left? We have Germany, Russia. Um, can I fit that into this video? Yeah. The Ottomans are Muslim, meaning all of these Christian powers do not like them. There's not a single Muslim um, nation besides the Ottomans here. Which is, well, actually the British Empire might be majority Muslim, now that I'm looking at it. I think it is. Um, so basically the British and Russians and Germans both agree to partition the Ottoman Empire. We're going to do this on this map. Um, except over here, where this area is given to the British. Um, great. Now we can actually go into detail. I'm not going to go so into detail, but I'll start. So it's British, German, and, um, so they effectively agree to partition it on this line. That goes to the British. That goes to the Germans, and the rest goes to the Russians. Um, so let's see that plan take effect. British forces rush into Slovenia, capturing Ljubljana, while German forces push into Hungary. Um, a 
uh, what's it called? Oops. Time limit. Um, Russian forces push into Moldavia. Uh, no, Moldavia, not Moldova. Um, where's my, where's that color? Here, Russian forces capture it, as well as German forces actually breaking the promise, and they rush into Transylvania, which makes the, um, Russians very mad. Now they feel they could break the promise, so they, note for the next video, they hate the Germans. Um... And so what they do is they quickly rush to capture them. Not capture, um, just cut them off. However, the British successfully capture Croatia and Bosnia. While the Germans push into Serbia. Um, they were supposed to get in Kosovo. Um, Montenegro and Albania are both given to the British. And the Russians uh, urge the British to capture North Macedonia. However, the British don't want to anger the Germans. Um, the Russians obviously hate them. But the British don't want to anger them. So they are definitely... They do not listen to the Russians. So we have kind of a weird relation between the three going on. So I, I need to do that. We have a weird relation between the three. By the way, it's a screen those borders. Um, however, the Russian forces are eventually just fast enough, and they manage to cut off the, but no, they, the Russian forces, um, go into Greece without, um, consulting their allies, which makes both the Germans and the British mad, so now we have the British not liking the Russians, the Russians not liking the Germans, so the British liking both, but the Russians and Germans hating each other. And Greece, instead of being cleanly taken over by one country, is now split into three. Um, this is ugly, but I don't care. And with Russia as the only country that can invade Turkey, they kind of take advantage of that and just take the whole thing. This was part of the original deal, but... Um, I said no rebels, but I didn't specify. Cur rebels that already exist can exist. So Kurdish rebels do exist. By the way, I'm just going to say the details once again. The Russians uh, capture all of this area, including Cyprus. Uh, Crete is given to the British. Uh, and there goes the Ottoman Empire. Nope, wrong map. Okay, how did I do it again? I gave... This entire area to the Russians. Uh, I gave the British. Okay. I gave the Germans this. Plus, like, Transylvania. And then I gave the British this. Germans this. Okay, good. Um, that's where I'm gonna end this video. Uh, I'm down to only, like, ten things left um yeah okay next video